Perhaps the most complicated and complex experience that we each go through at some time in our life is the experience of loss. Loss often comes into our life through the death of a loved one. A parent, a spouse, a child, a mentor, a colleague, a good friend. At some point in our life, someone who is close to us will pass from this life. We also experience loss whenever other things significant to us are taken from our lives. It could be the loss of a home or a neighborhood, the loss of a physical ability, even the loss of a dream or an ambition. Whenever we experience a significant loss, we enter what's known as the process of bereavement. Bereavement's characterized by a particular emotion, the emotion of grief. Grief is a deep sadness, an abiding sadness that stays with us. It's experienced sort of in the background, although can be more prominent at times, in the midst of all the other emotions we experience. So for instance, even when somebody does something to make us happy or show us love, when we're in grief, that sadness is still there. In the bereavement process, there are also lots of other emotions. There may be anger or regret, but perhaps what's most distinctive is grief. We came to understand the bereavement process in the 1970s from the research of two different people who provided us different models about the bereavement process. The first was Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, and the second was John Bowlby. What was common about both of these models is that they presented a series of stages or phases. And our conception from those 1970s models were that bereavement went through these series of stages, one after another, and eventually bereavement was resolved. It ended. We know today that that's not the case. We understand a lot more about bereavement than we did 50 years ago. Bereavement is indeed a process. It takes time, it takes a year or two, and it begins with the loss of someone who is dear to us or the loss of something important to us. When we're notified of that loss, when we get the news, the initial reaction is often one of shock and disbelief. It's as though we just can't believe that the loss has occurred. Some people describe this in physical terms, like getting punched in the gut or feeling like an arm was cut off. It takes time to move past this shock and disbelief, sometimes a week, sometimes two weeks. And then after that, this cyclic kind of experience begins to happen. There are sort of two different dimensions of it, and they intertwine with each other we go back and forth between one and another. The first is sometimes called yearning and searching. It's the experience of thinking that you see the loved one, you hear them, you feel them, you have active dreams about them, you may expect them at home at a particular time, or you may go out somewhere and think that they're gonna be there. At times going through this yearning and searching, you feel like you're going a little bit crazy, but you're not. This is really the experience of internally coming to terms with the loss that's occurred. The other dimension of bereavement that happens for people is a kind of despair. As we accept more and more that the loss has happened and adjust more and more to it, we often have this sense of, there's just nothing left to live for. Why am I bother going on? What about life is worth living without this other person? It's not that in this case, someone's actively thinking of taking their own life. Instead, it's that there's a loss of satisfaction in life, a loss of meaning, a loss of purpose. And this is part of the spiritual dimension of bereavement. We intertwine between these two dimensions as we move through the bereavement process. Eventually, we resolve the overall process. We find a way to live again without the other. We find new meaning in life. 
we find that we're able to reorganize our life in a way that we find satisfaction and a sense of purpose. But here's the thing that continues with us long after the bereavement process formally ends for us. That grief can come back. That grief often comes back for holidays, birthdays, anniversaries, when we're looking at pictures of the loved one, when we're sharing stories or are looking at gifts or mementos that we've received from that person. We feel that pain, that sadness come back up. I'm well aware of that experience. It happens for me in relationship to my father pretty much every year. My father died almost 20 years ago. And every year as I go into a store and pass Father's Day cards, I feel that sadness. I re realize that I'll never celebrate Father's Day again with my father. It's not just that I can't buy a card for him. It's that I can't be with him. And that grief comes back and it stays with me for a while. In the closing scene of Harvey Firestein's play, The Torch Song Trilogy, two characters are talking about this bereavement process. Arnold, the main character, and his mother. His mother had lost her husband many years before and Arnold has just lost the love of his life. Arnold's looking for his mother to explain something about this bereavement process. She says to him, Arnold, you can work longer hours, you can fight with me, you can adopt a child, it doesn't matter. It's like wearing a ring or a pair of glasses. You get used to it and it's good. I think that's very important for us to remember about the bereavement process and grief. You get used to it, and it's good. The goodness of grief comes when we realize that that pain we're experiencing is really a signal, a symbol for the love and care we've had with the other person from the importance they've had in our life. And that connection doesn't ever end. So that, like for myself, 20 years later, after my father's death, I still feel that pain. It reminds me that in some way he is still with me and shaping my life. Just as when you'll experience that pain of grief. It's a signal that that person is still part of your life and is helping you to find ways of making life meaningful. Thanks for taking this time to be with me today please be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel and leave me some comments so that I can respond to you.